Hi, everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today, I am going to share about the process capability for non-normal distribution using Johnson transformation. Before watching, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Some measurements naturally follow a non-normal distribution. Consider wait times at a bank or customer waiting times at a call center where it's not possible to wait a negative amount of time. Besides, in transactional or service processes, we often deal with lead time data, and usually that data does not follow the normal distribution. There are three indications of non-normality, lack of a bell shape, lack of symmetry, extreme outliers. There are two methods of determining the normality of the distribution, which are histogram and normal probability plot. Histogram is not suitable for small sample size, which is less than 100. In contrast, normal probability plot is suitable for both large and small sample sizes. What is a normal probability plot? A normal probability plot is a graphical method for determining whether or not the observations follow a normal distribution. One of the famous normality tests is the Anderson-Darling test. It generates a normal probability plot and performs a hypothesis test to examine whether or not the observations follow a normal distribution. When p-value is more than 0.05, you fail to reject the null hypothesis at the alpha equals 0.05 significance level and conclude that data follow a normal distribution. Let's take an example. The quality engineers want to assess the process capability for component noise level. They collect 25 subgroups of 5 components and measure the noise in dB. The lower specification limit for noise level is minus 30 dB. What is the process capability for the component noise level? We will use Minitab software to analyze the data. Select Stat, Quality Tools, Capability 6-Pack, Normal. Complete the following steps to specify the data for your graph. The process capability six-pack for noise is shown below. Before performing process capability study, verify whether the process is statistically stable and normality of distribution. The first assumption is the process is statistically stable. To confirm process stability, validate through control charts such as XBAR R, XBAR S chart and others. The second assumption is that the individual measurement from the process conforms to the normal distribution. To confirm normality, validate through a normal probability plot. On both the X-bar chart and the R chart, the points are randomly distributed between the control limits, implying a stable process. On the normal probability plot, the points did not follow a straight line and fall within 95% confidence interval. As mentioned previously, the null hypothesis for normality test is data following a normal distribution while alternative hypothesis is that data do not follow a normal distribution. The p-value is less than 0.005. Assume the level of significance, alpha is 0.05. Since the p-value is less than alpha of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and 95% confidence that the data is not normally distributed. What's next? The control chart indicates a stable process although the individual measurement data is not normally distributed. You need to establish a useful model that fits the data. If you have no prior knowledge of a reasonable model for the process. Use individual distribution identification to find a model that adequately fits the data. Use individual distribution identification to identify an appropriate distribution or transformation for your data before you perform an analysis. Individual distribution identification provides probability plots and goodness of fit tests that allow you to do the following. Determine which of 14 distributions provides the best fit for your data. Determine whether a transformation is effective to fit your data to a normal distribution. Select Stat, Quality Tools, Individual Distribution Identification. Complete the following steps to specify the data for your graph. Minitab will display 9 distributions and 1 transformations. 
The Johnson transformation appears to fit the data well as p-value above alpha level of 0.05. Use the Johnson transformation if your nonormal data contain negative values, or zero. Select Stat, Quality Tools, Capability Sixpack, Normal. Click Transform. Select Johnson Transformation. From the Capability Analysis, the PPK is 0.71 based on Johnson Transformation. There are two measures of process capability which are potential capability, represented by CP and CPK, and overall capability which is represented by PP and PPK. Potential capability only accounts for the variation within the subgroups while overall capability accounts for the overall variation of all measurements taken. The calculations for CP and PP are similar. The key difference between the two sets of indices lies in the estimates for within standard deviation and overall standard deviation. The CPPP index compares the allowable spread, USL minus LSL, against the process spread, 6 sigma. It fails to take into account if the process is centered between the specification limits. The CPK-PPK evaluates process capability by comparing the process center to the closer specification limit. In summary, use the Johnson transformation if your nonormal data contain negative values or zero or if the Box-Cox transformation is not effective. The Johnson transformation function is more complicated than Box-Cox, but is very powerful for finding an appropriate transformation. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye. See you next time.